Hey guys, Kyle Studer, kylestuder.com, bringing a quick video to you from a book that I really enjoyed. I've not read all of it, but Tools of Titans. I just mentioned this in another video. Tactics, routines, and habits of billionaires, icons, and world-class performers. There's people, Tony Robbins, Arnold Schwarzenegger, the author Tim Ferriss wrote The 4-Hour Workweek. This, what I'm going to read from, this is about schedule. And if you could, <clears throat> one of the questions that Tim Ferriss asks each icon or celebrity or high achiever, hey, if you could put a statement on a billboard, what would your billboard say? So this is a uh, little reading from Jocko Willink. So Tim says, first off, Jocko, if you don't know who he is, he's got a podcast, uh, Jocko Podcast, former uh, retired Navy SEAL, led one of the most decorated uh, SEAL teams uh, in the war in Iraq. He's uh, apparently one of the scariest human beings imaginable. Uh, 230 pounds of lean muscle, black belt, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, uh, legend in special operations, 20 years in the Navy SEAL. So, bad to the bone. He wrote a book, a uh, New York Times bestseller called Extreme Ownership. And um, it kind of reminded me, that's, uh, that's what we have to do as insurance agents, extreme ownership, you know, extreme ownership, highly accountable, taking responsibility, um, the buck stops with you. And so Jocko's uh, billboard, he says, my mantra is, very, is a very simple one. And this is what I'm going to drill down into. It says, my mantra is discipline equals freedom. And then Tim kind of drills down and interprets that. He says, I interpret this to mean, among other things, you can use positive constraints to increase perceived free will and results. Whereas a lot of people, we might think of freedom as like a free form day. And he talks about this, a free form day might seem idyllic, but they are paralyzing due to continual paradox of choice. What should I do now? And decision fatigue. What will I eat for breakfast? So I was just talking to one of my agents about this, about having time blocks, having things pre-scheduled. So I'm going to show you an example here, and I'm going to explain to you what this can do. This is a $9 planner from Walmart, okay? Pretty simple, and this is back in April, so this is just a blank page here that I'm gonna use for an example's sake. An agent, say Mondays are dial day. Don't care what day it is, Sunday is probably a better day to dial, that's fine. But in this example, Monday, agent wakes up. Agent doesn't have to think, he knows. Between 9 a.m. and 11 a.m., I'm gonna be dialing the phone for two concentrated hours. That means I got my leads out, my schedule out, my script out, everything's ready to go at nine. And that's when my phone is ringing, nine. And it's extreme ownership. And this discipline, this discipline will bring you freedom. These are positive constraints. Positive constraints can provide freedom. It's kind of contradictory, right? Well, from 9 to 11, focus dial time. 2 to 4, more dial time. 6 to 9, more dial time. Now, this layout, this is for an experienced agent who can book up his 15 appointments in these 2, 4, what is that, 3, 5, 7, 7 hours. They've got 7 hours of dial time scheduled. Now, how I like to think and how I always like to think about this was I would want to, I'd try to work my butt off when I sold mortgage protection and final expense. I would dial from 7.30 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. every Thursday morning, and I booked up Friday and Saturday. And I was trying to book up 15 appointments minimum, okay? So what I did was I tried to work my butt off. I tried to get as many dials as I could per hour because I wanted them to answer faster so that I could either get a yes or a no, schedule the appointment, 
or there's somebody that doesn't schedule an appointment, but I just wanted to get through them quicker, not in my language when they answer the phone, but in my work. I didn't want idle time. I just wanted to kind of pound the phones and, and get my dials going and get into a rhythm and get as much accomplished as possible in my first time block of dials. Why? Because if I finish my, my, my job, if I book up my flight, pretend your schedule is like an airplane, right? And you got 20 seats. You got 15 passenger airplane. 15 passengers. If you want to maximize your profitability on that flight, well, you need 15 people butts in seats. Each each person paying for that ticket. You want to maximize your flight, so book your schedule. And so I would try to work my butt off in that first dial session, and I could earn my time back. I could, I, I could not be on the phone between 6 and 9 when my wife's home or when my kids are home off school, whatever your situation is. You know, I would rather get it done. So I don't recommend you dilly-dally. I recommend you really learn how to focus on this and, and work through it. But to stay on point here, these are positive constraints. You're not wandering. You're not a wandering generality. You know what you're going to be doing. This is when I dial. This is when I dial. This is when I dial. No, I can't do that. I have a prior commitment. I That's my dial time. That's my dial time. I'm booking up in t Tuesday, Wednesday. I'm in the field. How long are you in the field? All day. Well, can't you come home for lunch? No. Like, These are my concentrated windows of productivity. Guys, you can't work this like a regular job. This is not a nine to five, come on home. Didn't have a good day, big deal. We'll get after it tomorrow. Like, if you work your butt off in these time blocks, this is how you can make a solid income, an above average income in America, in three days. But it, it's not like easy, it's not three days of regular work. These are like all out blitz schedules. You're working all day. You know, like sometimes I go out every Tuesday and this is what my schedule looks like. And if I walk into an appointment at 8.30 at night, if I am drove an hour and 40 minutes to get to my area to run my appointments, well, to get there at 8 a.m., you know, I've got to leave 6.15. Is that right? Yeah, about 6.15, 6.20 a.m. That means I got to get up at 5.30 have about an hour to get ready, get my stuff in order, wake up at 5.30, leave at 6.30, get there at 8. Got an 8, a 10, a 12, 2, 4, 6, 8. And if I walk into a house at 8.30 at night or 9 o'clock at night and they actually let me in, we present, we write an application or we write two, I might finish at 10, 10, 15 at night and then I got an hour and 40 minute drive home. Well, Kyle, that's crazy. That's like 17 hours, dude. Would you rather work one full day, a 17 hour day, and you don't have to do this, you could break this up into different different types of schedules, right? But would you rather go out here, work all day, and make $2,000, make $3,000, make $4,000 sometimes in a day with an all out blitz schedule, you know? Would you rather do this and make a thousand bucks a day? Does it take you five days a week right now to make a thousand bucks? So I might be hammering this schedule part too hard, but these are positive constraints. So you've got appointments set. You know when you're going to be seeing people. You don't know who's going to be there. You don't know their name yet, but you know these are the seats that need to be filled and you're tracking your numbers. Numbers. Dials, contacts, appointments. You can track door knocks and door knock sets. How many appointments did you set off of door knocks? So you got to take the thinking out of this. You've got to simplify. I was texting an agent the other day. I said, what time are you dialing on Monday? He said, or I said, when are you dialing? Monday. What time? Nine. See, this is my job to teach him Nine isn't a good answer. Nine to what? Okay? 
You got backup dials. What time do those start? What time do those end? Like you've got to start to think. You've got to have systems. You have to develop your own systems and your own methods, your own schedule. This is when I'm dialing. And what it does, guys, like they say, it takes away from decision fatigue. You're not wandering. There's no thinking. You know what you'll be doing. Now it's your job to take extreme ownership and execute that. And discipline equals freedom. Showing up is 70% of your success. Showing up to your desk with your leads, time to dial, showing up, making the phone calls, getting rejected, booking some appointments. That's the key. So, you know, this, this idea of I'm 1099, I'm an entrepreneur, I wake up and I do whatever I want. The free form day, like it was when you were, uh, you know, that's what it was like for me. I remember in like the summers, you know, in high school and college, you know, high, especially high school, you get out for summer. It's like every day you wake up, you stay up late, wake up, wake up at 11 if you want, eat some cereal, do whatever you want. See what your friends are up to, figure it out as we go. Well, you can't do that in, in this industry. Well, you can, but you'll probably fail. You need to have parameters. You gotta have a schedule. It takes away from the decision-making process. You're not, your mind's not working or wondering about what you'll be doing. This is how you can maximize your efforts. And believe it or not, there's something tricky that happens when you're consistent with a schedule. Your mind knows what to do. Your mind starts to do the work for you. It starts to know, oh, it's time to perform. And you have to learn this. You have to learn how to turn it on and how to turn it off. So when you're out here, turn it on. When you're in the field, turn it on. When you get home, turn it off. You did everything you could do. You worked as hard as you could. So when you're done with that, turn it off. Turn it on and turn it off. I was reading in this book also, it talks about a lot of people don't know how to do that. They don't know how to turn it off and turn it on. Discipline equals freedom, guys. If you want to stay in this business, you want to experience the freedom, you want to get ahead, you want to grow your bank account to the point where you are actually, you're not going out in the field to make money per se. You've got enough money to pay your bills. You aren't even thinking about that. You're just thinking about going out, being as productive as possible, continually working on your craft, Doing it with a positive attitude, working on yourself. If you blank, you blank. It's okay. It happens once in a while. I blanked two weeks ago. It happens. But discipline equals freedom. Discipline equals freedom. It's so contradictory. What are you talking about? I gotta be disciplined. I gotta do all these things I told myself I was gonna do, and you call that freedom? Yeah. Discipline will bring freedom. But freedom is not just no obligation. That's a, it's a big mistake. So I pretty much said all I can say, I think, about this. But I want to end it with what Tim said. Positive constraints to increase perceived free will and results. Like... When I go through my schedule, guys, when I wake up Monday morning, do my calls from 9 to 11, I'm booking 7 to 8 appointments for Tuesday, usually. Uh, I'm usually done by 11. Usually done by 11. And if I'm not, I might hang on the phone a little bit longer just to finish it. Or I'll get back on the phones in the evening and I need to book one or two more appointments. But... That's a great feeling when you get up, you do what you're supposed to do from 9 to 11, you accomplish the task at hand, you eat that frog first thing in the morning, you call the leads, you get that done, your most daunting task or the task with the highest potential consequence. We handle that quickly. And then I can enjoy the rest of the day. I can take my daughter to the park. I can take her out for, for lunch. 
We can go on a bike ride. I can do whatever I want because I was disciplined and I did the most important thing. It's done. Now tomorrow, I'll be in the field, meeting clients, enjoying myself, having fun. But you've got to operate in these time blocks. It's a huge, huge thing. I can't, I can't say any more about it. It's so, if, if you're an experienced agent and you want to add to this, the time blocks, the concentrated efforts, working concentrated windows of time, I'd love to hear about it. I know I was just watching an interview where, with uh, Jordan Belfort, the Wolf of Wall Street. Not, I don't, you know, I'm not a big fan, to be honest. He's uh, got a lot of cool stuff, but, uh, you know, obviously I don't love everything about him. But he had some really, he certainly knows sales. And one of the things that he talked about was uh, time blocking. Like setting times when you're doing something. He says, don't jump on the phone for 20 minutes. He said, that stuff doesn't work. You need to have time blocks. Like from this time to this time, I'm cold calling or I'm calling leads. And then when you're in the field, you don't go out and door knock for an hour. You have blocks. Like I'm knocking from 9 a.m to 5 p.m. I'm working from this time to this time, eight to eight. I don't care what happens, I'm working from these times. And you you do what you tell yourself you're gonna do. Your self-image goes up, your results go up. Your earning ability will increase because you're out there, you have more times dedicated to productive, income-producing activity. So, okay, I'll get off my soapbox, but I hope it, I hope this helps. I recommend this book. A lot of great things in here. Morning routines to prime your day, to start your day, to change your state. Uh, lots of incredible insights from people who've accomplished a lot and uh, we can gleam a lot of wisdom from them. So, hope this helps. Again, my name is Kyle Studer. If you wanna know more about working in my agency, we focus in final expense. You can go to kylestuder.com Scroll to the bottom, and there's uh, information where you can get in contact, where you can have a conversation. See ya.